My ancestors were Igbos mm -hmm. from Nigeria, and Igbos are called black Jews, that they're industrious, that they go after things, that they're hardworking people. So all the way back in my DNA, we were self-sufficient. Igbo Area TV, all on the Igbo. Somebody will say, nyap botoba, nyap botoba, nyap botoba. Court orders final forfeiture of 1.5 billion naira hospital linked to Okorosha's head. Uh, it seems uh, this is a uh, week of uh, probe and uh, you know, week of accountability. Yeah, who knows? A federal high court sitting in Owero, Imo State Capital has ordered the final forfeiture of dues of Hope Hospital, Owero, a 1.5 billion naira state of. The at 200 bit hospital linked to an head of Rocha Sokoroja, a former governor of Imo State and serving senator. And this was based on an application filed by the EFCC. T.G. Ringin, judge of the Federal High Court in Port Harcourt, had given an interim forfeiture of the property in August 22, 2019. According to the EFCC, the money that was used to build that facility was gotten through illicit activities through dubious activities they went on to say men for Imo state house money uh, that's a public fund were looted to build a hospital so they had to seize the hospital according to them uh, pascal obi who was a former permanent secretary and principal secretary to okorosha was a signatory to the accounts <laughs> Meanwhile, the OB is now a serving member of the House of Representatives and he has denied ownership of the medical facility. ESCC spokesman Wilson Wujaren said when he honored the invitation of the commission, the managing director of the hospital could not also explain how the project was funded. The development led the commission to file for the forfeiture of the property on July 25, 2019 under Section 17 of the Advanced Fee Fraud and Other Related Offenses Act 2006, Wujaren said in a comment. It seems um, rather than own up and you know maybe be dragged about, arrested, he seems to like want to save himself the trouble. So he allowed the EFCC and through the court, the property is grabbed for the state. Yeah, I think accountability should always play people should be accountable when you use state money to build a project it is supposed to be for the state just like some governors said in the middle belt using state money to build plazas big business plaza at the end of their tenure they still hold on to that plaza they collect rent which is supposed to be for the state so in granting the request for the interim forfeiture of the property, the court ordered the Attengraft body agency to publish the order in a national newspaper, which was accordingly complied with in the national newspaper of August 30, 2019, and the leadership newspaper of September 3, 2019, respectively, asking interested parties to show cause why the property should not be forfeited to the federal government within 14 days from the date of publication. Uh, you know, that is the normal legal process. Do you know who made an entry into the gubernatorial race of Anambra? Dr. Madaka. Why do Anambra people want him to replicate his known dates? Not until now that Madaka has been doing it. As Anambra drew close to moments for deciding a new leadership in its forthcoming gubernatorial elections, social political and socio economic groups and institutions such as Igbo Global Youth Assembly have voiced out on their choice of Dr. Godwin Madaka, an international industrialist, a versatile personality, an uncommon philanthropist, and a proactive intellectual. According to research and interviews across Anambra State, the yearnings for Dr. Godwin Madaka of Umuchu community in Orumba, local government to become governor of the state, was influenced by the discovery of his infrastructural revolution and exceptional contribution in the United States of America. Speaking with, during an interview with residents of Anambra, it was confirmed that the people yearned for him 
to return home and lead people of the capacity and foresight he possesses. They believe that his vast international relationships and leadership abilities will have pulled Anambra State through the historic paths of unequivocal expansion and relative development. Having been described as a modest industrialist, Dr. Monica, as a professional doctor based in Las Vegas, built one of the biggest healthcare facilities in the U.S. alongside his countless engagements of philanthropic gestures across the globe, recording more concentration in Anambra community, Nigeria. According to some other persons, the already established impact of Dr. Monica in Anambra State was even more impressive and more significant as against that of successive leadership, public and private institutions. The billionaire doctor has contributed earnestly to the improvement of the state, even as diaspora and umbrella. Some of his impacts and provisional projects include two churches, one each for the Anglicans and Catholics, a Trinity Hospital and Maternity Home, hundred standard houses for widows and the poor, built Immaculate Conception International College 1 and 2 with buses donated, built a police station for security and a magistrate court, developed a standard market called Afro Market, built barracks for the city defense, civil defense staff, built two monasteries for church and built a community center, community hall and its own village hall. How to photo student who visited Croatia for tennis championship or landed in refugee camp. Uh, two students of the Federal University of Technology were a photo who attended an international tennis competition in Croatia has ended up in a Bosnian refugee camp. Abia Uchen and Ebo Chinedu, the students arrive in Zagreb, capital of Croatia, on November 12th for the 5th World Inter-University Championships held in the country. According to Guardian, the students had participated in the competition and were preparing to return to Lagos via Istanbul, Turkey on November 18 when they were arrested. On the night before their departure, the 18-year-old table tennis players decided to take a walk around the country's capital but they were apprehended by police officers who requested their documents. Chinedu was quoted as saying attempts to explain to the officers that their documents were in a hostel where, where they had been planned to pass the night yielded no result as they were detained in a van over the assumption that they were illegal immigrants. We tried to explain who we are, that our documents were in the hostel but they took us to a police station. They paid no attention to what we were saying, he said. The officers later transferred the student to the country's Bosnian-Herzegovina border, where Croatian authorities had gathered a group of illegal immigrants attempting to cross the country. Police ordered the group to move through the walls and into Bosnia-Herzegovina with a threat that they would shoot those who refused. I refused to go into the woods. The officer told me he would shoot me if I didn't move, Chinedu said. The two Nigerian students joined a host of illegal immigrants who moved into Bosnia Herzegovina and ended up in a camp in Velika Kladusa, where thousands of migrants were stuck in tents. It was until the end of November that the camp volunteers assisted Uchen and Chinedu in contacting representatives of the table tennis competition to tell them of the students' whereabouts. Alberto Tangeti, organizer of the table tennis competition, expressed surprise, wondering why the officers deported the student to a refugee camp. He said the officers should have accompanied the student to the hostel for confirmation of identification documents. They told me the students from Nigeria were taken to Bosnia by Croatian police. I asked them to send me photos of their names. After careful verification, we confirmed that those two boys had participated in the tournament and had regular visas issued by the Croatian authorities. I really don't understand what happened because even the police in Pula were notified that they were here, he said. It is even more absurd that no one believed the boys when they tried to explain to the police officers that they had regular visas. It would have sufficed 
to accompany them to uh, the hostel to verify that they had entered Croatia legally. This is a sad thing, you know. Student who went for a tennis competition on a just a stroll, they were caught by authorities and instead of helping them trace back where they are coming from or at least go, going with them to confirm they had authentic visas and they have the, all the documents they required the police moved them to the camp where refugees are it doesn't make sense that's a mistreatment meanwhile they are safe they have been recovered thank god for they could be assessed and return meet three Igbo sisters who got pregnant the same time wow three siblings who have had the bone tied while sharing a lot in common now they share the amazing journey to motherhood together at young age they shared and cherished many moments of life and now they are also pictured going through pregnancy and journey of motherhood together same time three Igbo sisters Onyi, Chika and Olivia are celebrating being pregnant at the same time a look at the post photo shoot they are expecting actually four babies the reason is that one of them is carrying a set of twins the three beautiful Igbo sisters are all pregnant at the same time and they have posed for a maternity shoot. Once again, look at them, they rocked white outfits for the maternity shoot. Chica wrote, If you know me, you know I love my sisters to the next universe and back. I've literally shared everything with them. Clothes, teachers, parents, food, etc. I'm not sharing this crazy journey to motherhood. God's timing is just miraculous. I could not have dreamt it like this. Wow, look at their pictures. Lovely sisters. Thanks for watching Igbo Area TV. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also click the bell icon. Like our Facebook page. Join our Facebook group. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Bye for now.